Okay. This is fun. I'm ready. So I it's just 2:30 don't like on that you rush me. Okay, I just really don't like that you rush me in the final moments. That I'm like, I, uh, oh, are you okay? And then you're like, yeah, bleh! I hate that. I am a rusher. I hate that about you. Of all the things I don't like about you, there are many, and I hate that probably one of the most. That I rush. It's because I like things to be like loving, and I like mm-hmm. it to be like, great, yeah, here we go. Are so there people say that, that you? Great, here we go. What? Are there people that you hate when they're in a good mood? Yeah. I don't really like you when you're in a good mood. You're in a good mood today, aren't you? Yeah, I am in a good mood. Yeah, it's pissing me off. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's, that's okay. It's nice for oh. you. Apparently, yeah, it's, it's not nice. I'm just pissing off. Yeah, and you Torb's off. in a good mood well, too. What have I done? Me off. <laughs> no, what have I done that's pissed nice. you off? No, you're just all like getting along. It's annoying me. Oh, well, I'm sorry that I want to spend time with you, my friend. No, 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 that's nice. Are you going to start the show? Apparently not. Oh, I'll just probably leave this in at the top. Okay. I mean, we might as well. Every second of extra content I don't have to think about is great. Mm-hmm. That's a positive. Um, But I will not start until you say, all right, I'm ready. Let's go. Okay. Yeah, when you're ready. Uh, no, see, that was too rushy. Oh, I'm super cash. Whenever you want to go, just let me know. You sipping on your coffee. Okay. Hello. Welcome to One Trick Tony, a podcast where you can forget about your own problems because I'm in a great mood and think about mine instead. Um, We are recording right now um, episode 22, Taylor Swift joke, classic. Josh is here. You're in a really good mood, aren't you? Hi. I'm actually, I'm not like overly in a good mood, but I'm not in a bad mood. Just, today is a good day to have a good day. I did have Subway for lunch. That was really good, actually. Can I guess what you had? Yes, please do. Oh, fuck, you sound so down. What is wrong with you? No, I'm really happy. Uh, Can I guess I think what you, you had? had uh, sorry, I'll try and be more excitable. Uh, I think you had a uh, Italian herb and cheese as the bread. Mm-hmm. And I think you look... Like you've had some meatballs. No, no, I don't do meatball. Really? Was I right on the no. bread? You were right on the bread. You were right on the bread. Six I inch always or foot get long. the ex- foot long. I'm an adult. <laughs> um, I always get the exact same thing. Oh, um, always get the exact same thing. Chicken fillet, yes. lettuce, cucumber, tomato, heaps of mayo, cheddar cheese, not toasted. Fuck off. Wait, what was the meat? Chicken fillet. You know the one that looks okay. like a big teardrop? And they've got, like, they paint the stripes on them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was yum. Yeah, it was really good. What do you get from Subway when you go? I get a foot-long Italian herb and cheese veggie delight with all the salads, lots of jalapenos, lots of olives, and um, South West sauce, which they've now changed to be called uh, Chipotle sauce. Do you get veggie delight? Yep. Why? I had a bad experience with the um with some of the meats. <laughs> what you're tongue like tongue. So, um, just for a little bit of context, unless you're watching on YouTube, which you can, um mm-hmm. excuse me, at the One Trick Tony YouTube page you can watch as live. It's not actually live. Um, but for anybody that's not watching there. We are back in fucking lockdown, so we're recording from home, um, and you're holding a microphone as if you're about to MC a wedding. Yeah, it's it's and got it's the karaoke funny. vibe, doesn't it? Yeah. It does. It does. Sounds good, though. Um, yeah, it sounds good. Um, mm-hmm. But you just sound, you sound really down. Is something wrong? No. Nah, no, nah, I think like, uh, you know, lockdown... Uh, I don't know vibes. what like yeah yeah I mean I've I it's um it's the afternoon, uh, nothing to report really. But I I would like the the hard thing is, like you, it's very hard to sort of, you know, 
pretend. So like when you're in a bad mood, I know that you're in a bad mood. Yeah. When you're in a happy mood, I know that you're in a happy mood. Yeah, I can tell that you're not in a good mood today. That's why I I'm not in a bad mood, but you're in a better mood. No, you just and unfortunately you're just for not some in a great reason, mood. yeah. Um, so Italian herb and cheese foot long with mayo. Good one. Heaps of mayo. The mayo at Subway. I know it's so bad for you, but I love it. It's so good. Have you ever made your own mayonnaise? No, I haven't. It's quite a long process, isn't it? No, you just use eggs, I believe. No, doesn't it take fucking ages to make mayonnaise? You need to whisk it. Oh, I'm thinking about butter. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, like no, pancakes? I can't do this if you're going to give me one word answer. No, 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 no. Do you like pancakes? I fucking refuse. I literally... <laughs> um, oh, gee, it's pancake day today. I mean, not when this comes out. It will have already passed, but today... Was it Tuesday, really just pancake day? This, is, yeah, yeah. It's today, Shrove oh. Tuesday. And w- uh, did you eat pancakes? No, I haven't eaten any oh. yet. Okay. And like, you know, when you would get home from school or whatever and you'd hope that you were having like naughty dinner, like ordering pizza or whatever, and then you saw that like your mum had gotten like a roast out of the freezer? Mm-hmm. Like, and you were yeah. thinking like, oh, maybe we're going to get takeaway or something, but she'd like, you know, taken something out. Or she went, oh, I've got some... Fucking chicken breast in the freezer. Well, I got home from work today and Torbs had taken chicken out of the freezer. I'm like, mm. oh. It's a hate crime at that point, isn't it? Yeah. I just, and it's also just like a really horribly adult thing to do to have mm-hmm. enough forethought to take something out of the freezer to cook like several hours later. Well, it's a real commitment. And I feel like a lockdown, if we were to get anything, it's silly food. Like, surely we're allowed to eat silly food for the next few days. Yeah, and hashtag support local. You know, if you're if you're yeah. supporting local restaurants, except on so um, in Melbourne we are back in lockdown. We went back into lockdown at midnight on Friday last mm-hmm. week, and um, this podcast comes out on Thursday. So I don't know where we'll be at by that point, but we are supposed to be coming back out of lockdown tomorrow night, right? Like Wednesday midnight. Yeah. Um, I don't think that's going to happen. We've gotten lots of cases here. Do we? We had two. Yeah, but we've had like two every day. So we've had like six. I mean, yeah, not a, to be... Well, um, that's a lot from zero, isn't it? But didn't we... I thought like... Um, yeah, I have no idea. It's... Uh, we'd be guessing at this point, wouldn't we? Yeah, and you know, we're not a news podcast. It's not one trick mm-hmm. news. Mm-hmm. Um, so that would be a great. So, what have you missing so now that I mean you've been inside for uh, three days? What's the what's the vibe? Um, I'm actually feeling okay. I feel like it doesn't really change that much for me because I still get to go to work in the office. So mm-hmm. my actual job at Jason PJ, the one that pays me, not this one. Um, I I get to still go to work because. Mm-hmm. Like we're essential because we're broadcasting news and stuff. So I'm very, very thankful that I not only still have my job, but that I'm able to retain some normalcy, I guess, and like still go into the office and like wake up Mm -hmm. in the morning and like wash my face and put clothes on and stuff like that. You know, I feel like that makes such a big difference. Have you ever been pulled over? No, because I literally live a minute away from work. Okay. Yeah, so... I don't have very far to go, but no one on our team has, I don't think. I mean, all of us obviously have, like, the appropriate documentation to allow us to work. There's nothing illegal Mm -hmm. going on. Um, Mm -hmm. But, yeah, so I think that it's probably just, like, the police, I think, have probably bigger fish to fry than people travelling to work at, like, 4 and 5 a.m. Sure. Do you see anything crazy at that time? Like, I feel like there would be people still, like, coming out of bars and things like that. Like, not when it's COVID, but just in general. I feel like it's probably just a bit too late to catch those Mm -hmm. people. Like I reckon if you were starting work at three, maybe you would see people like stumbling around still, but because it's like four and five, I think it's like just too late, but there are definitely Mm. like creepo spookos around. Like really, it can, yeah, it can be a bit spooky in the morning sometimes. And so do you have any tips uh, for anyone that has to wake up early? For their job, like what what did you do to get used to it? 
I um sorry if this is not interesting. Um I am naturally a morning person, so it doesn't mm-hmm. it actually doesn't phase me at all. Like I don't ever snooze my alarm. Like my alarm goes off and I'm up. Like I'm up and I'm out of bed. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. Um yeah, like I'm ju- I've just never really been like that, but and I naturally like go to bed fairly early anyway. Like I fall asleep on the couch at nine o'clock. Like, <laughs> uh-huh. but the, um, so if you fall asleep so, at nine, do you then wake up at like eleven and walk yourself to bed? Um, yeah, or Torbs will like um, come over and be like, "Sweetie, it's time to go." To oh, bed. that's cute. Yeah, it, and it is. And so you would sort of really in a daze like walk over to bed. Mm. That's cute. And that I remember was before that I even kid, worked right? in breakfast radio. Oh, yeah, That's and your mum yeah. or dad would, like, pick you up or yeah, you would yeah. fall asleep in the car and they would carry you uh-huh. inside. Or you'd yeah. just forget, oh. like, it's like, how did I get into bed? That sort of feeling. Oh, I love that feeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we don't really get that I only that get it anymore, now if I've had too many espresso martinis, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and by so... that time, I'm, like, in bed and my heart's going like this. Like, there's no way I can go to sleep anyway. <laughs> Do you um do you eat before That's you get to the office? That's going to be a good video, that. Don't you reckon? Like a snippet. That little bit that we just did, I reckon that's yeah, going to be a great video. Fun. Yeah, George, yeah. can you make that a bit? Yeah, um, and it was me doing this as well. I was like, ah, so exciting. <laughs> like, where does the excitement stop? It just doesn't. Yeah, I mean, espresso martini, like I, I, uh, I, I don't have the crazy feeling that some people do like uh, my girlfriend Bree, she cleaned the house when she had espresso martini once like at like 11 <laughs> p.m like the whole like did all the mirrors in the apartment which um i thought was quite funny that would have been a lot because you had quite a, quite a nice apartment before there was a lot of you mirrors. obviously moved into the the delightful mm-hmm. home that you live in now mm-hmm. big nice yes. two-story house many bedrooms mm-hmm. big garden mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah it's all freestanding that, Yes, it is. And so, do, do you um do you eat before you get Must to the office? Nice. It is nice. Do you? But do you eat what? And really nice. and what do you eat? Um, I don't eat before I get to work. Normally, okay. I well, actually, the last like last year, I did intermittent fasting. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just didn't eat. Like, so I'd eat dinner and then I wouldn't eat until I got home and had lunch. Okay. And that was really good because. When I'm at work is when I eat the worst because we get sent like lots of free food. Mm-hmm. Or like Any free food? At the the mo- I guess no free food at the moment with COVID. Nah. That's upsetting. Nah, no free food. But one of the girls, Jane, she like always mm-hmm. bakes. So like this morning, oh my God, it was so fucking amazing. She made this um, hedgehog slice with like pistachios oh, yeah. on the top. Oh, yum. It was absolutely fucked. I ate like six pieces. And what's been the um, best radio perk that you've ever had through your job? Um, the best perk. I actually don't know. I'll give you an example, and then you can see if yeah. it prompts. Oh you. yeah, please tell me, share yours. So when I was um, at work, so I worked on um, Fifi and Jules uh, on their radio, which Beautiful. was like a national radio show, drive show. And there was um, Matchbox 20 performed on the rooftop at the radio station. I love Rob Thomas, yeah. He's awesome. Anyway, we got invited. Um, There was uh, only about 10 of us that were invited to go to Rod Laver Arena where they were performing. And they did a full, full dress rehearsal with everything set up, but only 10 of us in the whole stadium or whatever you call it, like a arena. And so we were standing, That's like cool. sitting there watching the whole thing and then like Rob would come up and like sing to us and all that sort of thing. Oh, yeah. that is really cool. That's like a, you can't even buy that. That's how cool that is. No, right. God. And if you could, it'd be bloody expensive. Uh-huh. Yeah. And like so the house surely you have in. something. Yes, <laughs> potentially. Uh, so what's a perk? Tell me a perk. Um... Oh, I mean, like you get to meet lots of cool people, not just celebrities. Like you get to meet lots of like interesting and different people. Like um, who? And uh, oh, I don't know. This is a really hard question to answer because I feel like the only thing that people are interested in hearing is about celebrities. Mm-hmm. Like, and people are like, oh, you work in radio. Do you know Hamish and Andy? Like. Mm-hmm. 
I feel like that's such like an Australian radio question. Like, I wish I knew Hamish and Andy. If I knew Hamish and Andy, I wouldn't be doing this podcast for free. I'd be very rich because I'd be doing a podcast with Hamish and Andy. Um, I think you're probably overrating what knowing Hamish and Andy will do for you. It doesn't give you an instant sort of paid podcast. Why? Bit. Why do but, you know that? <laughs> but uh, How come no, you know I'm thinking what that's a. Like? I, I'm thinking a list celebrities. Because you know Hamish so and th- Andy. Yes, I do. Uh, a-list celebrities. I'll give you an example. The problem is my oh, examples go. are so good; it's very hard to compete. Uh, oh, okay. People that I filmed in when when in radio: Justin Bieber, Pink, Kim Kardashian, yep. uh, oh, cool. Will Ferrell was a good one. Like, who? What A-listers have one. you had in your um, proximity? Well, when I worked in Sydney. Um, Ronan Keating did his radio show out of our studio um, for quite yeah. a while because his wife's Australian, I think, and, like, I think maybe, like, her mum or dad was really sick or something like that, and he did the show from Australia for, like, a week or something. And um, because of the time difference between here and Ireland or England or whatever the fuck, um, he was in the studio like really late at night, which is when I would be there and no one else would be there. So like the first day he was there, he was like, can you tell me where the toilet is? And like I told him where the toilet was oh, and all I good. could think about was how excited my mum would be if I could have told her that like I met Ronan Keating because like every mum, my mum obviously loved Ronan Keating um, you know, loving each day as if it's the last, you know, great song. It's a good song. Um, yeah. When you say nothing at all. Great song. But isn't he almost um, like a, uh, a local? Life is a roller coaster. Just gotta ride it. He had a lot on of good that hits. Long. Heaps. Um, I don't, what else has he got? Um, what else has he got? But he spent heaps of time in Australia, didn't he? Wasn't he on one of those, like, um, Australia's Shows Got Talent people, or something. Yeah, yeah, I mm-hmm. think so. But mm-hmm. um, but yeah, his like wife is from here or something like that. But anyway, so I met him. That was quite cool because he's obviously like a huge celebrity. Um, mm-hmm. A couple of years ago, I did a stunt for Jason PJ and I met Meghan Markle. Oh, that's cool. And like she had just announced she was pregnant. So technically also Archie and Princess oh, Prince Harry was there also. Um, that was very cool. I sang opera to her and like touched her hands pre-COVID, obviously. Was this, um, were you in like a crowd of people? Yes, I was. Okay. Oh, does that not count? That's good. No, no, no. No, that's good. It reminds me of when I, um, was dressed up as a corn chip to try and get on Ellen DeGeneres' show. Um, but there is something, I, I, I not, made the news, but there's something a little bit, no, it wasn't even in America. She was trying to pick people in Australia and the radio show sent oh. me down and I ended up on the news and the, the news anchor after the segment said, was that a corn chip in the background anyway? And then went on to the next story and that was the most exciting Oh, that's thing good. You've probably happen. still got that footage somewhere. I do, but it's but it's very pun- like it's hanging with punters, right? Like you're really getting in. Like yeah. at that point, you are 100 percent a punter. But also, I feel like you know you're getting down and dirty, and you don't have any advantage of being talent. So mm-hmm. I feel like in that situation, if you get picked out of a crowd, that means you're doing something right because you're with yep. a bunch of other losers that actually care mm-hmm. about meeting Meghan Markle or being a corn chip or whatever, mm-hmm. you know. But you're still standing out amongst all those freaks, which I think just speaks volumes. Do you like the Royals? No, not really. I I don't really understand the money that gets put into it. I don't really understand why we care about it still. But my Mm. mum was super... God, we're talking about my mum a lot. She loves Ronan Keating and the fucking royal family. Um, She was super (laughs) into the royals. And I... Yeah. um, (laughs) She's just so exciting. Um... (laughs) She, I remember being a kid, I must have been like nine, eight or nine or something, and she mm-hmm. took me to the zoo and on the way to the zoo we were, must have been listening to the radio and they said something about the royals and mum was like, oh, bloody hell, like this is going on. And I was like, oh, I don't really get the royals. Like what's up with that? And she explained the entire royal family and like their history to me in the car 
um, like on the way to the zoo. And it's just like one of those memories that I just like can't, couldn't forget if I tried. Like, <laughs> so, like you know, those really random weird things yeah. that you just like, you just remember? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I remember like learning about what a cold front looks like from the weather, like um, <laughs> in grade three. Mr. Van Breda taught us about that. And I was like, I felt like a meteorologist at that point. Yeah, I would. Yeah. I and remember so my the... mum teaching me how to use, how to tell time as well. It was like the morning before we were going to the um, the Royal Show, which in Perth is like an agricultural show, but it's like the Royal um, Easter show in Sydney. It's like the Royal Melbourne show. Like Mm -hmm. it's like just a massive fair thing and like with rides and stuff. And the morning of going to the show, my mum taught me how to tell time. That's amazing. Like digital or analog? No, like an analog. Like she taught me how to to read the time. And I just remember Uh then uh, my sister Libby crimping my hair and painting my fingernails. Um, They were blue. And she used like one of those um, nail pens that I'm pretty sure I got in a Sabrina Secrets um, magazine. Um, Mm -hmm. And she like dotted, drew like little flowers onto my fingernails. And I was wearing a blue Hawaiian shirt. My hair was crimped. And I remember this photo of me. I don't have it anymore. I'd have no idea where it is. But there's this photo of me and I'm like this. Very pouty and you've got your hand up. Showing your yeah, fingers. and I've got my hands up. I've got my <laughs> hands up so that you can see like the finger art and like the hair is creamed. Like, like and I just thought I looked hot thing. as fuck. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Tell me about it. Yeah, it was huge. Do you think it was because I was a, a, a chubby kid? Like, and I remember seeing on Queer Eye for the Straight Guy, they said that um, stri- vertical stripes were slimming. And so I went to best and less and only from and then on for everything. about two years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I only wore vertical stripes, but they're all business shirts. So I was sort of like, a, you know, a 13 year old at, at parties wearing a full, like, like I was an accountant, like a trendy ac- accountant. But I, I also wore a lot of Hawaiian shirts. Yeah, I feel like the Hawaiian shirt is like, um, it's a loud pattern to like distract the th- <laughs> the fact that you like aren't very happy with your body. Like, yeah. it's like <laughs> and you could go ten kilos either way, and you'll be okay. Like it was still fit. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, and that you knew that like at least people then would be like, great shirt, and they yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. like it would distract from anything else you had going on. Yeah. And did you do it's like show wearing bags? a big hat if you've a... got a pimple or something? <laughs> do people do that? <laughs> what? I don't know. It's um, just a joke. But show then bags you talked about me the, because of the delay. The Royal... Oh, yep. Yeah. Yes, show, show bags. Yeah. So they would release the like show bag catalogue like a month before the show and I would uh-huh. sit down the day that it came out and I'd flick through it and write down everything that I wanted and then I would colour it and make a short list and like write down how much they all cost and like what they had in them and then I would talk to mum about like what my budget was going to look like. This is like a huge thing and so the show was in October So, but all of September it would be all I would think about. Really? Like, how much it of it was, was food a- related? <laughs> Well, the show bag thing, so mum used to let me get like one show bag that was like from a TV show or like a movie or whatever. You know how you would get some show bags that had like, for example, one that sticks in my mind is a Hannah Montana show bag that had a wig, a blonde Hannah Montana wig and um, like stickers and like a a folder for school or a pencil case Mm -hmm. or fucking whatever. Um, So I would be allowed to pick one. Yep, mm-hmm. I remember having a Rugrats one, like all mm-hmm. of that stuff, oh, like amazing. One. And then the other ones would be like food ones. Um, mm-hmm. But I just, I love the rides. I love looking at the animals. They used to have like a big Woolworths pavilion where you like got to just like sample <laughs> heaps of food. And I like remember being really, really little and used to be able to get a sausage on a stick and it was free, like it was a sample. And then like, a year later, it was 10 cents. And then a year later, it was like 20 cents. And then it was a gold coin donation. And a couple of years ago, Torbs and I went, and I think it was like $10 for three sausages My or goodness. something. That's inflation. It's daylight fucking robbery. <laughs> I didn't know they were going to say it's daylight fucking saving. Um, do they have... Uh, <laughs> 
uh, which yeah, I didn't get. Um, I just thought, um, and also so doesn't was affect in, the price of sausages. This was in WA. Yeah. Do WA, they don't have daylight saving, do they? Um, they used to, but no, nah, not anymore. Mm-hmm. Which I think is dumb because I think daylight. This is uh, like controversial. Daylight savings is so great. I just don't know why people wouldn't like it because I just think it's the best. Isn't saying daylight savings with the S a bit? Oh, that's um, a faux pas. A, a, yeah, it's a bit bogan. I think. I oh, mean, I would it? do it, but yeah, I was very careful. Like you just see people on Instagram doing stories like. It's daylight saving, not savings, you oh, morons. I've, yeah. Oh, yeah, I guess because it's not like a saving as in like saving yeah, money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always just said daylight savings. Yeah, but yeah, now I'm it's a very easy. Yeah, no, don't be embarrassed. And so, oh, are you sorry, a rides everyone. girl? Like, have you, um, do you go yeah. on like scary yeah, rides? <laughs> she just um, winked. I winked. <laughs> um, yeah, I love rides. Oh. <laughs> Um, again. Yeah, the scarier the better. Like <laughs> I fucking love them. Um, and so, Are you, do you like I rides? Guess... You seem like someone that would be a bag holder, not a ride person. Yeah, no, I um. So Superman at Movie World, I I did that. I remember, and that felt really safe, but thrilling. I've never been and, to Movie World actually. Yeah. I I know what you're referring to because yeah, I'm an Australian yeah. person, but I've never been. Uh-huh. But you've just I just think that there's too many things have gone wrong that I just I can't I don't want to deal with that anymore. Like I've got enough stress in yeah. my life that I See, don't I need get to, that. you know. Yeah. But it is fun. And as an anxious person, I don't do a lot of things just because they're fun. I find fun fairly arbitrary, but rides, I just love them. Yeah. Unless it's the Woolworths Pavilion, which I've never, oh, yeah, the sausages. I've never heard of. Yeah. Yeah. I've never heard of a Woolworths Yeah, Pavilion. I think it's the IGA Pavilion now. Really? Yeah. Um, okay. Oh, sorry, and not so, Pavilion, the Pavilion. Pavilion. Uh, pavilion. Don't swallow your owls. Uh, and so have you, have you been to any overseas, like, uh, fun parks or whatever they're called, theme parks? I've been to Disneyland in um france and in japan that's huge that's i've been two. to yeah um i've been to universal studios in um uh-huh. in japan as well and disney sea in japan so there's like two different disneylands in japan mm-hmm. um and one is like all of the sea movies like finding nemo etc and the other one is like normal disneyland do you remember the documentary Blackfish? No, what's that? Tell me more. It's the, uh, it's all about SeaWorld. And it's sort of after you watch oh. it, like the idea is you don't want to go to SeaWorld anymore because it's sort of mean what they do to the whales. It's pretty Orcas. fucked, right? Yeah. What, Zoos what in general, I think. Are, well, I think it's just like, you know, I don't know. Did you say Tiger King? Yes, I did watch Tiger King it's and then I liked it so that. much that I then watched the Louis Thoreau documentary mm-hmm. where he went to the Tiger King place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really like Louis stuff. And um, uh, I mean, Tiger King was only a year ago that that was a real thing. I know. How fucked is that? It's, yeah, it's weird. Yeah. <sighs> it's weird being back in lockdown because it is like, even though I feel like I'm doing fine this time at the moment, mm-hmm. um, depending obviously how long this, this goes on for, and that really sucks because obviously people in like London and the UK have been locked down for months and months and months, and that's really shit. Like New what Zealand just went back work? into it. With all well, these people? I guess, I guess that whoever can works from home, and if you can't, like you're just fucked. Is like, it like job? Pe- really do they know. have like job keeper and stuff in the UK? Like, I wonder what that looks like. Well, that's what I was about to say. Like, I don't know what their uh-huh. like financial support looks like and stuff. You'd hope that there would be quite a bit because they went through, they've gone through all of this during winter as well. So it's uh-huh. not as if there's things, you know, like where you can get out and try and do things, and you can't anyway. It's a fucking pandemic. Like, you can't really do much. Um, uh-huh. 
But, yeah, so I feel really shit. There's all these people that have been in lockdown for ages. New Zealand's just gone back into lockdown in Auckland um, for, like, three days or something, which is fucking shit. Um, But it's weird, like, triggering attitude feeling, isn't Mm it? That, like, we've – I feel like we've come so far and then all of a sudden it was just like, oh, like, stay in your house again and, you know, we're back to, like, recording this podcast on Zoom and – Mm-hmm. Um, like you're working from home and mm-hmm. all of that. It's just so bizarre. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, <laughs> I don't yeah. mind it. Like, um, but I, I understand that uh, in saying that there is a, a lot of issues with it. For instance, if you um in, you know, domestic violence situations or like there's so many people Horrible. that it's not yeah. good for, even if you think about like, the pandemic has been really bad on people who were already struggling, and so yeah, yeah, and that's why I re- especially like, like with it doesn't impact and- me, but I know it's impacting a lot of other people. So I'm like, I understand why we need everything open. But as someone who's and introverted, I guess that's yeah, yeah, but I guess that that's kind of what I mean. Like I get, um, like I feel bad for saying like, oh, it's really triggering because we've been kind of back to some sort of normal for a little while in Melbourne for a mm-hmm. you know a bit like the borders kind of opened up like you could get back to WA if you know that because obviously they've had like the hardest border that we've experienced like um you know and you could kind of come and go a little bit more and see family and whatever and like it just kind of felt we were on the right track and now this is happening mm-hmm. I just don't think it's really going to return to I say normal with like bated Mm -hmm. breath of like it's not really going to be the same but like until they can figure this vaccine out which is supposed to happen Mm -hmm. in not not too long like by the end of the year hopefully at least some people will have it but yeah it's just fuck it's just so fucked Mm. do you write a diary really bad no i don't okay like as in like do i journal is that what you mean yeah yeah no i don't have you? I feel like maybe you had like back in the day. Like, did you have like? I'm trying to think of what. Uh, there, there was something that your sister had. I'm sounding like John Edwards. You know how like just fucking talking shit until it connects a dot. Crossing remember? You, I remember you. Yeah, I remember you said something about there was. You had like a box full of stuff. Like, but I, I thought it was diaries, but I can't remember what it was. That was in WA no. that you were going to get sent over. But it was going to cost heaps um, to get sent over. They've got all like all of Torbs and I's books. Yeah, sure. I think that could have been. Is it. That but you've never kept. Have about? you ever done any journaling, ever? Oh, I've definitely like been given diaries like as a kid mm-hmm. and kept them for maybe a week, but just like not gotten into the habit. Yeah, yeah. I feel like yeah. I just talk so much that by the time my day is done, I just don't have any words left. Like. Mm. I just get everything out all the time. Like if I get home from work and something's bothered me or like I'm about to go to bed and I've kept something in or whatever, Torbs will look at me and he'll be like, "What? what is it? Like mm-hmm. because he knows that if I don't get it out of my body, I will just stew on it and I'll die. Like mm-hmm. so I guess in that respect, like I literally can't keep things in. Mm-hmm. But I mean journaling I think is definitely – um, like a really, what's the word I'm looking for? Meditative. I, valuable, valuable doesn't uh-huh. really, I don't think, like give it enough credit. But I think it's a really good tool for people that yet yeah, maybe don't have people that they can be super honest with or mm-hmm. super open with and stuff. Like I think it's really, really good. I just don't think it's for me. Yeah. Do yeah, you on the, journal? Um, is that why you're well, asking? Nah. Is that what nah, you're into? Nah, 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 I don't. You I don't was just thinking seem about... like you'd really have the patience to journal. Yeah, I've, um, I'm a bit phlegmy from that almond milk. That's weird. That shouldn't be phlegmy from oh, almond milk. Sorry, um, about, sorry about that, that guys. Um, <clears throat> uh, pick it up from there. Oh, yeah, uh, now I can hear it. Okay, sorry. No, that's okay. Uh, yeah, no, I, I would love to, I'm not good at sticking to things. I, uh, nah, I mean, you know, I'm like not. I, I want to read more. So I downloaded an app called, uh, Speechify, which turns any text 
into um, like a spoken word. And so you can, sure. like my idea was that I was going to like each morning put all of my emails in there. And then when I walk to work, I can have a robot read out my emails. Um, and, uh, but I tried, like last, I, yeah, I tried it last night. I tried it last night. It was too robotic. I think also it would be annoying that it would read out like, so at the bottom of my, you know, how at the bottom of an email, email signature, signature, it says like, yeah. yeah. And then, so is it going to go through and be like 12 Smith Street, 5121 mm-hmm. Newcastle? Like that's so mm-hmm. annoying. Yeah. Yeah. Like that Have just you, sounds um, horrible. Like at the bottom of, you know, how at the bottom of an email it says like, this email has been sent from blah. If you have gotten it for the wrong reasons, but, you know, like imagine that this mm-hmm. email is privileged and confidential. Like that yeah, would just yeah. stress me out. Yeah. You just fast forward on that bit, I guess. Oh, but, sure. Uh, got you. Yeah, did yeah, you have yeah, any yeah. New Year's resolutions? Did we, I feel like potentially people have just said 2021, no New Year's resolutions. Well, I actually, I had this written in to talk about. Oh my god! Sorry, I just burped, and that test is like um, subway. Ah, uh, lucky you. I like the taste of subway, so you know when you burp afterwards, you're like, mm, I didn't mind that. Um, yeah. It was actually something I was going to talk about in the first episode, and we just never got to it. Um, sorry. But I, I mean, I don't really. I think that you know how they say that if you call something a diet, like the language around that makes you like not successful. So, like, mm-hmm. calling something a New Year's resolution isn't yes. very good because, like, mm-hmm. the, yeah, the... Um, well, you shouldn't mention it. There was a whole TED Talk I watched on, like, if you mention what your goals are going to be, it lets off the same chemical response as if you did them. And I can relate to that. I say shit that I'm going to do oh. all the time. I just never do it. I agree with that. Yeah, I'm a mm-hmm. real sayer. I'm not a real doer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, a but person. one of the... Yeah. It's not good. Yeah, you. But see, you go gung ho on shit immediately, yeah. and uh-huh. then you just like, and then you just get over it because yeah. Well, I guess that's why because you're like, well, I've done it now. Mm. Well, even I, um, you know, remember I tried to do a million steps in a month, and then yeah. on day three I got severely injured because it's yeah. that's thirty thousand steps a day. It's a lot. And also, like, because you spent all that money on that really expensive exercise bike. Yes. Yeah. And you're like, I'm going to not get anywhere except unless I do the same amount of kilometers on my bike and then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. How's your swimming going? So it's kind of turned into us shit canning you. Well, the pools are sharp. Uh huh. Were pools you doing it last week? So Were you swimming swim. last week? Um, no, I had a really busy week at work last <laughs> week. <laughs> <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it fucked how we lie? Like, um,. Someone, if someone says, "Ah, uh, are you um, have you been using the bike?" And I will say, "I'm using it tonight." <laughs> yeah, but you know you're not. Yeah, but it's you annoying. know you're not going to go on your bike tonight. Why are we so shit? Oh, I don't know. I'm the worst. I and I just like promise myself stuff. Like um, I'm like, oh, this week I like really need to get my shit together and like not order so much junk food or not yeah. like not exercise because I really need to do it because it makes me feel better. Not because I care about being thinner or whatever. It's just like I just I like feeling strong and I like mm-hmm. feeling fit and healthy. I also like not getting puffed just walking downstairs to my car yeah. via the lift, yeah. you know. Not even and going then, <laughs> not going yeah. upstairs, downstairs. No, it's yeah. downstairs in the lift. Like I literally uh-huh. just walk 10 steps to the lift and then 10 steps uh-huh. to my car and I get yeah. in the car I'm like, oh, that was a big one. Like, turn the activity yeah. off on my Apple Watch. Um, <laughs> and I just, like, I say that I need to do more. And then I just don't. And then I, like, beat myself up about it. Mm. And then I feel depressed. So I'm like, oh, I couldn't possibly work out because I'm so depressed. I, I get that. I said that I would only watch TV if I was using my bike. Oh. Do you know how hard that is? Yeah, I can imagine. I was watching like 20 minutes of a 40-minute documentary and I'm like, I'm done. That's like, yeah, but I wanted and then to you're watch like, more well, TV. Yeah, but what are you going to do? Yeah. yeah. So I, well, I anyway, yeah. all of all of that aside, um, mm. the actually the um, New Year's resolution that I set myself that was this year that I wanted to do stand-up. 
Oh, great. Have yeah, you which done I an think open is, mic before? No, I've ne- no, I've okay. never done it. And I've I've never even wanted to except for the past probably year and a half. Mm-hmm. Um and I actually wanted to do it last year and then obviously obviously obviously, obviously everything was shot and it was oh, I was just like your, char- your stand up character. I could imagine your stand up character sounding like that. <laughs> Don't you think? What's the deal with this aeroplane food? <laughs> go off, um, go no. run with Tony here. <laughs> it sounds like a really like bad Jay Leno. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, I, and that was what I said that I was going to do this year. That like I would, I would go to like an open mic night and do stand up mm. comedy. Yeah. Do you, um, do you write any jokes? Well, I would have to for the. For the yeah. occasion. Well, to give you an um, idea how bad I am, like I said, I want to write jokes oh, and stuff. Oh, back so on I you. Watched, yep. Yes. I watched a video about how to write jokes and bought a lot of books that were the same books that uh, Jerry Seinfeld would, Feld would write, like these yellow legal pads. Right. And now I've just got a lot of yellow mm-hmm. legal pads. Not many jokes. Yeah. It's a... I'd, I'd, I've written... <sighs> I've written lots of stuff. No, no. <laughs> you sure? Just um, one. But you know, maybe you know what I should do is mm-hmm. try and write stuff and then try it out on the podcast. Yeah, but what have you got? Like, what's in your notes? Can you just, even oh, if it's just an idea? My notes are all on my phone, which I'm using as a webcam. Oh. So I actually. What don't sort of have stuff would you them. write down? Um. Well, or if I think of like a good joke. Um, then I like will write it down and then later come back to it and like be able to flesh it out. Like, so say if it, um, no, I don't want to say because I don't know if it's any good. No, nah, say it. No. No, nah, come on. Nah, it's, I, I honestly, I don't think it's good. So. No, nah, come on. Everyone wants no, to I've hear just, it. No, well, I've just thought about a few like things that I would maybe use to open with and okay. about like how, you know, um, like obviously doing stand up is like really super intimidating so i've thought about a couple of things that would maybe work for that i can't remember them right now i'm not going to do it right now cuz it makes me very nervous um go on how about i write a joke this week and next uh-huh. week i'll do it on the podcast okay that sounds good don't don't do that no no, no don't that do sounds that. good that sounds good i'm tr- is I'm it trying. like a sort of a premise like give us like a little outline or something well, I wrote a show, like a stand-up show, probably two years ago, and it got mm-hmm. it just it, sorry, I say show, it probably goes for about fifteen minutes, um, maybe ten, uh, and it was about like kind of centered around me being like a real loner as a kid and like mm-hmm. not having many mates, um, mm-hmm. and like I thought that was pretty funny. I did it for Torbs, and he he laughed. He thought it was mm-hmm. good. Um, but yeah, so that kind of thing, but nothing like super intense. Like I don't have like a million jokes that I've written. I've never done a fucking stand-up comedy workshop or anything. Like I don't really know much about it, but I think that I would be good at it. And so that's why that's my goal for the year. Have you ever thought about writing an autobiography? All the time. I literally think about it all the time. So I can't wait until I'm famous enough for people to care about what I've written, like a la Tanya Hennessy and Christian Hull, um, mm-hmm. where they're at a point now where they're they're writing books. Isn't that amazing? Couldn't you just write it now so that because when you're rich and famous, you want like your time's worth nothing right now. <laughs> so why don't you do but... it now when you're poor and unfamous? So that when but you're rich and famous, you're fine. But if I write an autobiography now, but if mm-hmm. I write an autobiography now, the best bit hasn't happened yet. Sure. So I mean, that could really be the whole end... name of the autobi- autobiography, couldn't it? <gasps> oh, I like that. I'm going to write that down, actually. What about you just start with chapter one, the best, best hasn't happened yet? I'm actually just writing that down because I think it's a good idea. Okay, great. My God, should I do that? Should I write a book and be like, I'm absolutely no one by my book? Could you do? Could you start writing a memoir and then every 
week on the podcast, you just read a passage from it? Okay. See, if I start writing a book yes. with the attitude of like, yeah, I'm no one, but people will buy it, that's kind of what's happened with this podcast. I thought that I'm no one, people will still listen. They don't. Mm -hmm. People listen. We have heaps of people listening. I don't think we do. Really? I think it might just be my sister clicking on it lots of times. That's sad. Yeah, it is. It's so sad. At least sad. she's supportive. Yeah. So it's yeah, all you got waste. me there. Oh, I mean, that's what I was talking about last week. And then lots of people messaged me like, oh, I love that you do the podcast. It's so funny, which is lovely, but insincere, mm. I feel. Yeah, but <laughs> doesn't that show you that they're listening? Yeah, which is lovely. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. I actually also got a lot of messages with um, some great jokes last week. Um, and I've... <laughs> Google I've Home Mini. The Google Home Mini. Um, so someone <laughs> messaged me and said, oh, I was listening to your to your podcast as I was walking along the beach and guess what I found? And I was like, what? And I'm like, Google Home Mini. <laughs> um, and then, then someone else messaged me and said, last time I ordered Chinese food, instead of a bag of free prawn crackers, I got a big <laughs> bag of Google Home Minis. <laughs> <laughs> Which that's I great. thought was so funny. Uh, that's so funny. Yeah, that I was, was very, very impressed with that as a joke. Yeah, I think there's. I'm actually looking down. There's a Google Home Mini very close, but I, I, I can't be bothered unplugging it for the gag. But, oh, um, that's okay. Insert gag here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Do you think well, when I went to the royal show? I, instead of paying for a sausage on a stick, I got a free Google yeah, Home Mini. Yeah, that's right. yeah, when I first started going, they you know, you'd get one for free and then it was 10 cents, then a gold coin. <laughs> <laughs> and then you just got it for free, the Google Home Mini. You yeah. gave them a free Google Home Mini and they gave you the sausage in return. <laughs> do you listen Maybe if to I much do music? Are you a music person? Oh nah. I I listen to the I listen to music a lot, but I listen to the same mm -hmm. stuff all the time. Okay, so you're not like my favorite I want song to be is that "Torn" person. by Natalie and Bruno. Oh, I love that song. Yeah, who doesn't? Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, but um, I want to be the person that just loves. Like, wouldn't it be cool? Like, could you imagine having like a record player, having vinyl? I have a record player. Just with Natalie and Bruno's "Torn." <laughs> no, we we have a record player. We have like lots of vinyl and stuff. And like, do you have and I both like love. I don't. So, no, okay, that would be cool. I don't. Maybe we'll see if I can find it online. Buy it. And so, what we're saying? Too. So, you and Torbs have a bunch of like you have a bunch of records. Yeah, like both of us really like music, but I never am like discovering new stuff. You know how I've talked about this on the podcast before. You know how some people are people that like will listen to their Spotify Discover Weekly? I know that just recently you've become an Apple Music person, but you yes. know how people do that and they listen to their like Discover playlists and stuff? I don't do that because new music mm -hmm. just gives me anxiety and I can't deal with it. Yeah. Oh, well, I've become a real big country guy. So um, there's a there's a singer called Luke Bryan. Oh, yeah. He's got a good song. Is he the guy that used to be a judge on American Idol? I think he was. How do you know yeah. that? Um, I just... I just know. I don't know. That That's him, eh? Yeah. And yeah. I just like... it's just There's something so fun about country music. Just the lyrics. They're just so pure. Yeah. I love Shania Twain. Yeah. But that don't impress um, me much. No, um, that was a good joke, a Shania Twain joke. I probably should have. Um, I got it. I got it. I did. Uh, It'd be good if you were album. a better producer and you had a little sting that was like, that don't impress me. Much. That would be great. But I would have to have yeah. known that we were going to talk about it. Um, but you should have just known. If you're a better producer, you would have just known. You would have had it. <laughs> when you were a kid, did you dance to the song, I Feel Like a Woman? Yeah. Of course. Same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In your wine shirt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Getting ready for the royal show. Your sister was crimping your hair and you were dancing to Shania Twain learning how to tell the time. <laughs> Did you um, have Birdie Beetles in Yeah. In Fuck yeah. 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 One of my Don't favorite they taste like questions. shit? Yeah, but do you know what they're made of? 
fucking plastic and soap? No, no, no. Do you actually know what they're made of? <laughs> No. This is going to blow. This is one of my favorite trivia, trivia questions. Uh, what are the birdie beetles made out of? Uh, they're made what? out of the leftovers or, or like the cutoffs from violet crumbles. Oh, that's why I don't like them because violet crumble is shit. It's a pov um, crunchy, isn't it? Crunchy, yeah. I do, you like do not like violet crumbles. I love picnics. Really. I was just talking to Tom's about this the other day. Do you know what else is a really good chocolate bar that I think is totally underrated? Morrow's. Okay. Oh, love a Morrow. Yeah, Morrow. So, yeah, no, Twix are okay. Too biscuity, I think. Oh, no. See, I like that because it's a bit of like zing. No, no. If I want a biscuit, I'll eat a biscuit. But the the Mor- I remember as a kid, uh, my dad having a friend from New Zealand and you you couldn't get Morrow bars in Australia, no. um, you could only, you only get, get them get in the, the tight favorites. Ones in like a favorites, yeah. yeah. It would do my head in. It's got a couple like, of ca- fat is... kids catching up, <laughs> yeah, isn't <know>. it? <laughs> <laughs> but how about this? So my dad's friend brought back an esky from New Zealand of Morrow bars, and I took all of my undies out of my undies drawer, chucked them on the ground, and put Morrows. And I would, I had like thirty Morrows, and I would count them every day. And then, like, because I was worried that my brothers were going to take one. Yeah. And I would eat, like, a full. And then I relived the moment at a um, at a workplace where I saw when that they had When you went into mor- someone's underwear drawer and it was <laughs> no, filled no. with chocolate. <laughs> no, I, um, no, I went to Cole's supermarket and they had Morrow bars for a dollar. And I have oh. this tweak about, like, I love buying things in bulk. And, yeah, um, you do. Yeah, and so I bought every Morrow bar they had um, and, like, it took the actual boxes, you know, that they used to display them. To, like, look yeah. at them, yeah. And so I bought them all and my uh, one of my colleagues, well, like, they felt like it was a bad decision because I bought, you know, 30 of them or, you know, 30 bucks worth or whatever, a dollar each. And she oh said, God. Josh... You don't like. I was trying to lose weight at the time. Like Josh, you don't need these. And so she went and handed oh. them all out to everyone. Everyone's like, "Thanks, Josh." And I was like, "I sort of don't approve." I was really pumped about the Morrow bars, but yeah, you know they what? Are she did good. me a favor. Yeah. Yeah. Except also, like, what a bitch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very true. Don't tell me what to eat. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh-huh. if I want to eat thirty Morrow bars, like, whether yeah. you think it's a good choice or not, let me do it. Uh huh. But the problem is that then, she, then she made me feel bad because she was like, "No, you keep talking about it. you're going to do all this and do that." And at the time, oh, fuck off. there was a, a pregnant woman in our team who was just eating like chocolate mousse for lunch, and so I was just eating the exact same as her. Like, as a, like I was oh, just eating yeah, like sympathy a, weight. Yeah, sympathy yeah. Pregnancy. I was just like, oh yeah, yeah, I'll get you a chocolate mousse. Like it was just. Yeah. Oh, was, I love chocolate mousse though. It is really good. Have you ever made your own? Yeah. Yeah, I have. It's never gone great except there's like a vegan one that Torbs and I make and it's literally just like cocoa, sorry, cacao powder and mm-hmm. um, coconut milk. Mm-hmm. Have you ever and, done keto, um, the diet? Yeah, we did it like before, before it was cool. Like it was – like when ages ago Give me a and we did it for probably like three months and um it like worked for Torbs but it didn't agree with me like it just sure. made me really sick yeah i remember um, i made but- um keto friendly chocolate mousse and in the process i fucked like four avocados which oh like that cost a lot of money but yeah it was like yeah avocados as chocolate mousse and like people like it tastes just like chocolate mousse like you watch the youtube it's oh my god it's like i can't even tell the difference and it literally it tastes like 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 guacamole that someone's accidentally put chocolate in chocolate in disgusting yeah yeah Yeah. you just like really hate yourself if you try and lie to yourself in that way yeah like yeah. it's like me if i sat here and said like i'm gonna work out after we record this podcast is the same mm-hmm. as like this tastes just like chocolate mousse <laughs> that you get from red rooster it's just not yeah, it's why not, would i do not. myself that disservice 
<laughs> what about fat bombs? Did you ever have fat bombs when you were doing keto? What's a fat bomb? So you get like dark chocolate, you get coconut uh what's coconut oil, you um put it in the microwave so you go sort of like one one to one ratio and so you melt the chocolate in the coconut oil you mix it all up and then you um get like a small ramekin and you put a blob of peanut butter and then so you make it's essentially peanut butter cups and you put the coconutty chocolate mix into the ramekin you put it in the fridge and it goes hard and so then when you eat with a spoon you get peanut it's literally like a peanut butter cup they're delicious but the reason they're called a fat bomb is because keto is all about high fat that you have to have high fat and so the coconut oil provides that fat oh that sounds really good i love peanut butter cups Mm -hmm. oh they're so good do you have you had justin's peanut butter cups no who's that they're good just some guy that makes them some guy. <laughs> it's one guy and he's in his kitchen and he's making peanut butter cups. Maybe. Um, Maybe. I can't remember. Have you been to America? You haven't, have you? I haven't, no. I wish that okay. I had. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They have like some – They've. It's... they're a big peanut butter and chocolate country. Like, you know, peanut butter. Oh, M&Ms. yeah. And that's just where I deserve to be because I mm-hmm. love peanut butter. Oh, mm. so good. Yeah, I remember I got so much, like I was eating so much peanut butter and in San Francisco I went to this like, um, there's like a chocolate place in San Francisco, I can't remember what it's called, I think it starts with a G and they did like a San Francisco golden uh, like ice cream. Okay, what's it, What's the bridge called? Golden Gate Bridge? Is it Golden, golden Gate, Gate Bridge? bridge. Yeah, and so it was a Golden Gate Bridge thing and they had peanut butter on it anyway, I remember walking and realizing that I dropped a big dollop of peanut butter on my shoe. And I just oh. like, in that moment, I'm like, I've, I'm in trouble. And like, you know, when you're on holiday and you've obviously only bought like a select amount of shoes and mm-hmm. clothes, and yeah. then you just think about it and you're like, I've fucked the holiday now. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, what do you do? Because every time you go somewhere, you've got those shoes on with the fucking peanut butter on yeah, them. Yeah. A constant yeah. reminder. Oh. And I so how long I were you in like Japan that, for? Oh. Oh, sorry. Um, no, no, you talk, you go. Oh, I was just going to say, I think about that when I like hurt myself or like have a blocked nose. I'm like, uh-huh. oh, I've wasted all this time not appreciating the fact that I didn't have a sore knee or didn't have mm-hmm. a blocked nose. Um, the first time we went to Japan, I th- we went for a month, I think. Wow. And the second time we went for three weeks. So, um, uh, But Torbs, GB, Torbs has who, heaps of friends that live there. Um, oh, really? So... Yeah. Why does he have so yeah, many friends? Cool. Um, just in general or... Um, yeah. <laughs> um, no, like three... So the first time we went there, three of his best friends, like from his like school friendship group, uh-huh. um, have had all moved over there. One of them's moved home now. But um, but yeah, he... Um, so one of them, Kyle, he's like married. He's um, got two little girls to a, um, a Japanese girl. They live in Tokyo together. And his other um, best friend, Yanni, um, lives there. And he, like, teaches English. And, like, That's yeah, cool. he's loving it. They love it there. Yeah, even, like, through COVID and stuff, they've been like, no, we're, like, more than happy to stay, which is really awesome. Do you think you could teach English? Mm, I just don't think I'd be a very good teacher because I'm not very patient. Yeah, and I wonder what people need. You know, like they say, oh, you can, if you can speak it, you can teach it. I'm like, is that really true? Well, like, so for those Japanese classes to be like a Japanese teacher, uh, to be an English teacher in Japan, literally yeah. they don't let the teachers speak in Japanese at all. So you don't need to be able to speak any Japanese because you're not actually uh-huh. allowed to speak to them in Japanese. Like, obviously to live in Japan because um, it's such like a polite country. It's like Mm -hmm. the right thing to do to try and speak as much as you can, at least so that you can like be polite when you're asking for things and um, handing money over and stuff. But, um, but yeah, for the most part, like, and every time, like both times that we were in Japan, um, we like Torbs and I were trying to practice our Japanese 
on mm-hmm. people, but they wanted to practice their English on us. Uh, so we would like walk in there and try and like s- strike up a conversation. They'd be like, oh, don't worry about it. Like I can speak a bit of English. And you'd be like, oh, thank you so much. Like you'd feel really rude, but they loved uh-huh. it. Like, yeah. yeah, I wonder like, do you um, just say hi, like welcome to English class? Everyone know what Japanese. I'm saying? And then, yeah, oh, yeah, got you. Yeah, I don't know. But, yeah, like you said, apparently it's just like, oh, well, you don't need to know anything. But I'm like, mm-hmm. how much is nothing? How do you it's like when a fit person. Like, I don't, I don't it's understand. like when a fit person says to you, like, oh, it's so easy. I'm like, well, how easy is it? Yeah, yeah. Like, Is it like, I wonder if it's as fit. simple as, you know, like pointing at a toothbrush and saying toothbrush, like just pointing at items. I guess so. Everyone bring in an item and I'll say the word. <laughs> like and I'll just pretty, tell you what it yeah, is. I could get yeah. around that. Like that's like um, it's almost being like a influencer. It's like being shown respect <laughs> for doing nothing. The classes also would be really short because how long is it going to take for 12 kids to show you one item and you tell them what they yeah. are and then see you next week. Thanks for the 50 bucks. I love that idea. <laughs> I think that it, like it's a um, even uh, – uh, with my other podcast that I'm actually a host of, uh, oh, we okay. were we try. Well, I know that I'm just a producer for you. Like I, I know that I know I'm in a little. If you haven't watched the YouTube video, Tony has put me in a little box, and she is in a big <laughs> box to make it very clear. And it says one trick Tony. Like it's very obvious. It's a hierarchy. Yeah. Yes. yes, but um, on the other show, the Daily Talk Show, we do a YouTube do YouTube as well. And we get a lot of people learning English. Which is very cool. Yeah. And so maybe this could happen think... with this as well. Oh, that would be cool actually. Except people yeah. would just learn how to swear and ask for chocolate. Um, <laughs> yeah. Do you think that you could live abroad like overseas? Mm-hmm. Um, like, well, I guess at all. Or do you think that you could do it like in a non-English speaking country? Yes, I would love to live somewhere else. Uh, in a non-English speaking country, that's hard. Where, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? Um, this is such a hard question to answer mm-hmm. because I there's so many places I'd love to live. Like, um, Torps and I sat down. This is probably two years ago now. And we wrote like a list of non-negotiables. So it's like all the things that we wanted to achieve in our life. Yeah, it was like really nice to kind of sit down and be like, what's something that like you don't want to live without doing? Um, Mm -hmm. And for for both of us, both of us had um, living abroad was like a a non-negotiable. So both of us like, yeah, like for both of us, it's like something we have to do before we like before we die, I guess. Um, And when's that? I mean, it's hopefully it's not tomorrow. Yeah, it'd be annoying. Yeah, it's all very final, isn't it? Um, yeah. But yeah, like it's just something both of us really, really want to do. But um, we would happily, like we would love to live in New Zealand. Um, I could live in Japan, I think. I'd obviously have to learn a lot more Japanese, but um, I'd love to live in England. Um, Torbs' family is all Irish. So, I mean, Ireland would probably be quite cool. Mm -hmm. Um, I could probably live in America, except it's so fucked at the moment. So I would hope that it would kind of change up a little bit in that respect. Um, I would love to live in... No, that's not overseas. Well, I guess technically it is. Oh, okay. So you want to go overseas. Okay. Well, yeah, abroad. Yeah. Abroad. Yeah, sure. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, w- I, th- I would happily live anywhere. I think as long as I could work, mm-hmm. um, in whatever capacity that was, as long as I could I think do it'll stuff be New Zealand like New or Japan for you. I think that makes sense. Yeah. Well, I mean, New Zealand kind of feels like another state, doesn't it? So it has like the excitement mm-hmm. of moving to another country, but mm-hmm. like the, the safety of like moving into state well because for for us at least i mean i don't know how many people kind of care or whatever but um like when torbs and i first met at uni both of us really wanted to live in melbourne and i was like god that's just never going to happen and now we've lived in three states together so you just Isn't never melbourne know what i guess you expected um yeah yeah oh, i wanted to live here for so long and i, I love it i absolutely love it um 
but yeah, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah. Well, um, maybe we should put I that think as a we've question for on an hour. Yeah, I think we should put it as a question. You do the questions on Instagram. So if people yes. go to One Trick Tony Show on Insta, maybe you could ask people where in the world would you live if you could live anywhere? Oh, that's a good one. That is a good one. Yeah. You're the producer. Figure it out, you know. <laughs> um, All right. Anyway, thanks for listening to us talk for a whole hour. I know that Josh was a bit slow going in the beginning, but we got there in the end, I feel. Um, Do you think you I can perked follow up us. or you just got used to it? No. Nah, no, I feel like we, we got there. We I feel like because I was up here mm-hmm. and you were here and I feel mm-hmm. like we leveled out oh, that's nice. over the time. Yeah. Yep. Um, you can find us us hmm, on Instagram at One Trick, One Trick Tony, Tony Show. With Josh. <laughs> One Trick Tosh. Um, <laughs> One Trick Tony Show on Instagram at One Trick Tony Show on TikTok. Um, How's TikTok going? One Trick Tony, TikTok's going quite well, actually. Um, I haven't gone viral yet, but I mean, mm-hmm. leave that to COVID. <laughs> Can ev- <laughs> well done. Can anyone help with that? What do you do to get go viral? Oh, I don't, just really, need to no, like I don't really understand it. Yeah. Okay. I feel like it's kind of like a luck of the draw. Do you know I read a thing the other day, though, that I didn't know mm-hmm. that this was a th- how it worked? But apparently on Instagram, if people like save your posts... That's like the best thing. It's like a super like. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. I have heard that. Also, carousels are good because you, a lot of swiping, a lot of engagement. Yeah, um, so if you post like lots of photos in one thing, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. So um, if you're so inclined, please share our posts save to your it. story or save them. Yeah, because apparently them. that's yeah, yeah. great. Um, uh, what else do we do? We've got a website. There's an email address. You can mm-hmm. figure that out, though. Yeah, yeah. Um, Hi at one trick tony. dot com. Show uh, no. One trick tony. dot com. Yeah, we have that. dot com. Um, what about those reels? You know how like they do the pointing, like three things or like five things to do to get a pay ra- raise, and they're like pay rise, and they like dance, and then when the beat happens, they point, and when they point, the thing comes up. The text comes up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you want me yeah, to you do? Do you want one. me to make one of those? Yeah, yeah. And what so about the five out? things? What about um, five things you need to do before the what's at the royal show? <laughs> it's like, get your <laughs> like, <laughs> crimp your hair, yeah. get your nails done, buy a Hawaiian <laughs> shirt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> can you do that? And you can actually dress up in a Hawaiian shirt with it, like the it's whole. It's quite look. niche. I feel it's, like not many people fun. would really understand it. It's great. <laughs> You could Good do one. one. You're doing a great job. Make sure you Thank watch you. the YouTube I, of that. Yeah. My back hurts. All right. Oh, sorry. Okay. Well, thank you so much for listening. Um, I hope that everyone's doing really well wherever you are um, and love you. That's enough. Are you going to say bye? Bye. Love you all. Oh, no. No, 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 no. I just me. I say love you, not you. You say it. All right, no, but I have to be the last person to talk. Okay, sure, sure. But then you said for me to say bye. Yeah, I said for you to say bye, so that then I could come off that and say okay, love sorry. you. Bye. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. okay. Bye, All right, everyone. Thanks, everyone. All right, thanks, everyone. Bye. That's great. Right now. No, that was really good. No, no, you say bye. Bye. Love you.